Lord, we worship you. We give you praise. We give you honor. Thank you, our Lord. Thank you, our God. Thank you, our healer. Thank you, our sustainer. Thank you, our help. Thank you, our helper. Wherever you are joining me from today, all over the world, can we lift up our hand and let's worship our Lord, our God. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we worship you. We give you praise. We give you praise. Lift up your hand and worship the King of Kings. Lift up your hand and worship the Lord of Lords. Let's appreciate our Lord, our God. Let's bless his holy name. Let's adore him. Let's worship him. Let's say thank you, Jesus. Let's bless the name of our Lord, our God. Let's worship him. Let's adore him. Our Lord is good. Our Lord is good. Our Lord is good. Our Lord is good. Thank you, Jesus. Blessed be your holy name. Blessed be your holy name. Lord, we give you thanks. Lord, we give you praise. Father, we say thank you. Father, we say thank you. Lord, we say thank you. We worship you. We worship you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name, we are praying. In Jesus' name, we are worship. Let us pray. Our Lord, our God, want to say thank you for today. We bless your holy name in the name of Jesus. We give you thanks. We give you praise for another wonderful moment. Thank you for this time. Thank you for this wonderful opportunity. To come before you today, Father, I want to say thank you for your hand of healing. Thank you for your hand of restoration. Thank you for your power. Thank you for your wonder in us. Thank you for all that you have been doing. To you be all glory. To you be all honor. To you be all adoration in the name of Jesus. Father, as you come before you today, I ask that the heaven open upon us in the name of Jesus. Heavens of mercy, heavens of favor, heavens of lifting, heavens of revelation, heavens of divine encounter. My Lord, my God, let it open upon us in the name of Jesus. Today, beyond our imagination, more than what we think, more than what we plan, Father, let heaven open upon us in the name of Jesus. Do great things, greater things beyond our preparation, greater things beyond our dream, greater things beyond our vision. Father, I pray that today, you will do it in our midst in the name of Jesus. And at the end, Father, let all glory, all honor, all adoration to your holy name. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. I say, in Jesus' name, we have prayed. Praise ye the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. Once again, I welcome each and every one of us. Those of us who are online, you are all welcome in the name of Jesus. Eagles Network. Praying Eagles Network. Praying Eagles Network is an online prayer ministry where we come together in the place of prayer to pray unto the living God. We come together online to pray unto the living God in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ with the help of Holy Spirit. We pray unto the living God in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ with the help of Holy Spirit. And hear me, testimony flows every blessed day. Amen. And I know that as you join us today, your own testimony to the Lord call it forth in the name of Jesus. I say your own testimony to your marital testimony, the testimony of your business, the testimony of your career, the Lord will bring it to manifestation today in the name of Jesus. The Lord God will bring it into manifestation in the name of Jesus. Praise ye the Lord. Once again, I welcome each and every one of us to today's day 19 of this month day 19 of this program you are welcome in the name of jesus this is prayer avalanche prayer avalanche run three times in a year the month of march the month of july and the month of november 
March, July, November. By the grace of God, this is March, year 2023 edition, and the theme is New Beginning. New Beginning. Why New Beginning? Because God wants to start a new thing in our life, a new thing in your home, a new thing in your marriage, a new thing in your business, a new thing in your career. Praise the Lord. So once again, I welcome every one of you in the name of Jesus. Before we go, while I was early this morning, while I was meditating and uh, praying concerning today, the Lord gave me a message. Three, four, five, seven. The Lord gave me a message. Seven of them that I should deliver is not today. It's not like the other Sunday. It's not the, like the normal Sunday. Today is not like the normal the here yeah, Mr. Yama. Uh, there's no teaching today and uh, there's no prayer today. God just said deliver it and proclaim my word. Amen. Seven messages, seven prophecy, seven revelation, seven messages, seven revelations, seven prophecy, seven prophecy, seven message from the Lord to every one of you. So the Lord said, deliver them and proclaim my word. That is what we are going to do today. Praise the Lord. But before we do that, I want to say a big thank you to every one of you who support this vision with your seed, with your tithe, with your offering. It's the vision of God. I keep saying it. It's a vision of God. If not the vision of God, I won't be, I will not be on it. Now, every blessed day, uh, we pray, we, I'm not sure that it's a day that we don't come online. If we don't come online for uh, the online, we have prayer to pray every blessed day. Praise the Lord. Every Thursday, hours of mercy. Every Friday, we have communal service and we have uh, net Fiji. Every Saturday, the children prayer meeting 5 p.m. and the whole family will come online 8 p.m. to pray. Every Sunday, uh, we have our Sunday service. So, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday is only the remaining will come online to pray and those Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday that will be one thing or the other. Praise the Lord for us to do. But uh, hear me, it is because it is the vision of God, the mandate of God, the assignment of God. That is why God is helping us to see come online every blessed day. And God make it to be possible because of the support that the ministry is getting from every one of you. Finance. The very first um, prayer avalanche, the very first prayer avalanche, that is November 2019, November 2019, Ephesians 6 uh, 19. Ephesians 6 19, the team in every kind of prayer, November 2019. The whole expenses for that month is what we are using, just it's not even enough for a week now. <laughs> it's not enough for a week amen but god is helping us to keep coming and uh, as we are coming their testimony from all over the world amen i pray for every one of you whom god is using to support this ministry not only from where you are expecting help from the least place where you don't expect from the lord will raise help for you in the name of jesus the lord will raise help for you the lord will raise help for you the Lord will raise air for you. 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 That's why I will lift up my eyes unto the hills. Where come my help? My help coming from the Lord who made the heavens and the earth. I pray again for every one of you that God is using to support this ministry. Apart from those of us who are every week, every day, every month, we send in our, our uh, financial resources to support this ministry. Many of you, you pray for us every day. I have a team, I don't know them all over the world. They come together, pray for this ministry. Your prayer is doing a lot. Your prayer is making impact. Your prayer is, make, is having effect. Praise the Lord. I have some people, they encourage every day the same message. Every day the same message. Every day they call, every day the same message. Hear me, sir. Hear me. Even for those of you who are always online. When you come online, you make even your ordinary amen that you make online that you that comment it have a, it have effect because it makes me to know that yes you are there you are receiving it it encourage 
for every one of you, no matter the group you belong to, those that pray for us, those that carry the spiritual body, those that God is using to finance this project, this assignment, I pray for you. Help of God will locate you this season in the name of Jesus. The help of God will locate you. 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 I don't think I know how to five. I don't think I know how to let me say thirty percent. Yes, we talk online. Sometimes when we are chatting, when we are talking, it's like we have known ourselves for ages for long. But it's just online that we know ourselves. We are many of you. You are totally outside my country, but God brought us together and as a family. Here, Mister, here, me now. From that quarters that you don't know people. From that places that you don't know people, and you must be helped in that area. I pray for you, sir. I pray for you, man. Let the help of God arise for you in the name of Jesus. My mother is in Nigeria, precisely on those states, somewhere in those states, Nigeria. I'm a son, I'm in another area, Lagos State, Nigeria. But for those of you whom God is using to help. God's assignment in my hand, you are totally in another environment. I want to pray for your children. When, wherever your children find themselves, wherever your children find themselves, this is where I find myself doing the work of God, praying the good network, Lagos State, Nigeria. My mother is at another location, and every one of you, nobody know my mother. Praise the Lord. Wherever your children find themselves, I pray for you, sir. I pray for you, ma. The help of God will be available for them in the name of Jesus. The help of God will be available for them in the name of Jesus. The help of God will be available for them in the name of Jesus. Every one of you, you are also a son, a daughter to somebody. The help of God will be available for you in the name of Jesus. A big thank you to every one of you. The Lord will not depart from your tabernacle in the name of Jesus. That's number one. Number two today is March 19. March 19. I don't know in your country. I believe in your own country too. Today is March 19. But in Nigeria, today is Mother's Day. Today is Mother's Day. To every mother's in the house. To every mother's in the house. To every mother to be in the house. To every mother in the house. To every mother to be in the house, I pray for you. The joy of the Lord shall be your strength in the name of Jesus. The Lord will confirm his word in your life. That good prophecy, that good revelation that you hold on to. By faith that you hold on to. That you do not allow anything to shake from you. In the name of Jesus, the Lord will confirm it in the name of Jesus. The Lord will confirm it. The Lord will confirm it. The Lord will confirm it. And I pray for every mother in the house. Either you are a grandma. You are great grandma, great great grandma, or you are mother, and you are about to become a mother, somebody that will give back to children, no matter the category. I pray for you. Your labor over your children will not be in vain in the name of Jesus. Your labor will not be in vain. 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 In the name of Jesus. Today is prophetic declaration for a new beginning. Because God gave me seven declarations, seven prophecy for seven peoples. I don't know the group that you are going to belong. So let me start from that one, from that angle. Today is Mother's Day. Every mother is in the house. That pain, that agony over your children, over your family. I pray for you, sir. I pray for you, man. It shall not be vain in the name of Jesus. The Lord will reward you. 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 In the name of Jesus. Every of your heart desire concerning your children that you are crying to the Lord. Lord, when will you establish this for my children, for my son, for my daughter? Hear me, sir. Hear me, man. I pray for you. By the power of the Almighty God, the Lord will establish it in the name of Jesus. It's not easy to be a wife, not to talk of to be a mother. I, I, I keep saying this, that the responsibility of the whole family is upon the shoulder of the mother. 
upon the shoulder of the wife, not the husband. Let's 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 be sincere. Let's face reality. You know why? Either it fall to the left or to the side. Whatever the outcome of every decision in the family, the mother is always at the receiving end. Either it fall to the left or to the right. Every decision that we make in the family, every decision that you are taking in that family, the outcome, the mother is always at the receiving end. The mother is always at the receiving end. If it's good, forget it. That uh, the father will claim that uh, you see my son there. Ah, the father will not claim the title, the father will not claim the honor, but the bread, <laughs> the bread, go to the mother. When I was small, before I grew up, whenever my brother and my sister, whenever they, they travel, you know, they are always they are outside the, the state, some of them outside the nation. Whenever they come around, those who are married among them, whenever they come around, before they will. Before, you know, as they are coming and everybody are crying, uh, screaming, shouting, hey, welcome, 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 sir, welcome, sir. They, they will carry a special bag. And in one way or the other, they will sneak it in into my mother's room. And they will drop it there. And they will see, give signal. Nobody should touch it. Nobody should. <laughs> Praise it alone. It belongs to the mother. Then they will come, ah, daddy, welcome, sir, this and that. They greet the daddy. When they are going, they give daddy something. Whatever they are going to give to daddy, mommy take times two. And that one that they are going to give to daddy, he is he going back to the mother? <laughs> Praising the Lord. Every good thing, the mother is always at the receiving end. And if it turn out to be the opposite, the mother is going to be at the receiving end. Do you see your son? Do you see now? Then it has become the son of that mother. It has become the son of that woman. Not our son again. You see what your son has become. You see what your son has become. <laughs> so the mother is at the receiving end. If a man has money, has the resources, and because of one reason or the other, he now overpampered one of the sons, one of the children, and that was spoiled. Men, we are so active. We are so God created us. God wired us like that. Before we know it. Men, we are the one that spoiled that child. The moment the guy so the, the child got spoiled, what are we going to do? We will switch to another side. We we'll pick another side. The one that is making it, the one that is not spoiled, we we'll, we'll pick that one. And that one that we spoiled, no, will not become your son. Do you see your son? We are the one that spoil it, spoil him. We won't say we are the one again. You see what your son has become. If you are responsible, if you are there. If you are there to correct him or her at the right time, we should become this. But it is the father that spoiled it, that spoiled uh, that child. So do you see, either the outcome is good or the outcome is bad. It's always the mother that is always at the receiving end. So that is why whenever I come online and we are talking about couple, I always try to lay emphasis and face the side of the mother. You saw that men are good. Ah, good care. Okay. Oh many does, please forgive me. Good is, is not in the dictionary of any man. Somebody say, What about you? Did I say I'm accepted? Come and ask my wife. <laughs> Praise it alone. Good. There is nothing good in the dictionary of any man. If you are looking for a man that is good, you will you you will to belong. I know you you just manage us. <laughs> Where's my wife? Praise it alone. So, my attention is always on women because of what I have seen, that the way I have seen them, that they labor over their home, they will labor over the man, they will labor over the marriage, they will labor over the children. So, two wrongs will never make good. Two wrongs. If the man is wrong and the wife now wants to repel or the wife wants to do the same thing, it will not make right. So, that is why I always focus on women. If men, especially African men. African men will not tell you sorry. African men, if you are waiting for your husband to tell you sorry, it is wrong. You will wait till eternity. We will not tell you sorry, including me. The ego, African ego is there. Permit me. We will not tell you sorry. 
even when we are wrong, we still want to prove that yes, we are the man of the house. It will not. So if you want to prove it, it will not make right. And at the end of the day, something will go wrong. And when something goes wrong, the woman at the end of the day will, only, will be at the receiving end. So why not let's do something that will give us a positive result at the receiving end. So it's not, please, let's, let's get it right. Whenever I'm online and I have to do with couple and it's like I'm laying emphasis on women. I know your labor. I perceive your labor. I can feel it. The very first, our very first child, that was the day I made covenant with God. There's nothing my wife will do that I will not forgive her. Do you hear me? What my wife will do tomorrow, next year, that I never know. The day we have our first child, I, I told God that day that this woman, as long as I live, I forgive her whatever sin she's going to. It's not that we will not argue. you. It ought to do if she do something wrong, I'm just going to tell her you are wrong and I will stand by it, you are wrong. But the area of forgiveness, why? When she was laboring, put into bed, I was there, I saw the pain, I saw the agony. So when after the child came out and they were expecting, waiting for the placenta to come out, and I saw him bled on bed like a dead person, lifeless. Ha! Ah, I can't withstand it. And I asked myself, is this what women pass through? And the sister, what's my wife? If you still remember, uh, one of our family friends was with us at that time. Sister Bisi by name. May the Lord God bless that uh, sister wherever she is in the name of Jesus. She was with me. She laughed. She said, yes, that is what we pass through. And I feel like crying for my mother. I'm the last born. So I feel like crying for my mother. I said, is this what women pass through? She said, yes. That is what we pass through. So that day I said, if this is what women pass through. <sighs> so please, ma, all the mothers in the house, you know, pray the good network. I love you. And I will always celebrate you. My prayer for you today that you are saying we are celebrating Mother's Day. Over your husband, over your home, over your marriage, your labor will not be in vain in the name of Jesus. And those those of us who are coming as a mother, you are believing God for fruit of the womb, and you, tomorrow, next year, this year, next year, you become a mother one day. Your labor shall not be in vain in the name of Jesus. Your labor will not be in vain in the name of Jesus. My wife, my second mother, <laughs> your labor over me, over the children, over the family, over this ministry, will not be in vain in the name of Jesus. Yesterday was fantastic. Amen. Please, when we are coming next week, let's come with a bottle of wine. Wine, original one. If you like, buy expensive one. Praise the Lord. Next week, Saturday, we are having communion. What kind of communion? On Saturday, not Friday. Saturday, new wine in our marriage. So you come with that bottle of wine. Amen. New one, eh, original one. Say so, amen. We will bless it and everybody in the family will take it. And from that day, write it down. You begin to see the expression, the, 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 the confirmation, amen, of new wine, new joy in your home in the name of Jesus. My wife, thank you for that yesterday. But there's something you said. said she said it more than three or four times. And I asked one of us online. And she said, yes, no, if not, let's go. I said, give them money. Give us money. Ah, ah. As if she was angry with me. Give us money. And if you give us money, don't ask for change. Ah, okay. I will not ask for change again. Okay. Amen. Since I said that we should give you money, am I right? <laughs> My wife. She started to say, give us money. Give your wife money. Uh, Mrs. Kiola, we should give you money. Give us money. Give us money. Give De Mr. David Kibel, give your wife money. <laughs> and when you give her money, don't ask for change. We don't ask for change. You <laughs> praise it the Lord was so fantastic but please uh, please man before i deliver to this message two or three more to contribute to what my wife said yesterday let's learn to manage ourselves husband and wife we grow up in different environment we grow up in different environment we grow up in different environment and our environment that environment that you grew up from is part of who you are today my father is somebody who, when he's walking he's walking fast as like a military man so every one of us will grow up that way if you do something wrong my father will say come because he's going to flog you and because i don't want him to flog him i will begin to run and that man will run after me you want to run you are wrong 
There was a day I ran from the house to the second street to the third street to the fourth street, and my father was running after me with his cane. Yes, you hear me. There's no child or my father that will not know how to run. Because when we are going in the farm, the man will be walking fast, 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 fast. Before you know, you just branch one forest. Before you know, you branch. If you miss it, if you miss it, you are gone. <laughs> you are gone. Because in forest, there's no track road there. You pay, and before you know, you turn to another place. Before you know, you turn to another place. So for you to keep to that to him and not miss the road, you just have to be running. The man is walking, but you are running. How long will you be running? So we grew up that way. So when I marry my wife, you know, Lagos girl, she she was born and bred in Lagos. And when she's going, she's going smart, she's going, ah. I'll be looking at what is the problem? Madam, walk now. We'll be walking. Ah, I'll be look at her, she's far away, like three steps. What is the problem? Can't you walk smart? So I'll wait again. She'll join me. Before we take two steps, she's, ah. I'll be look at her. What's the problem of this one? Can't you walk? I don't know, I'm not walking. I'm running. <laughs> I'm not walking, I'm running. So who is at fault? Who is at fault? She grew up to take it easy. But me, I grew up. And it's my blood. Jiggy, 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 jiggy. <laughs> Amen. So if my wife want me to come down to a level, ha, she will kill you. And if I want my wife to come to my level, I will drag her to death. Because she was not formed like that. So what is the solution? We have to come to the middle. My wife, shift forward. All right. Stay a little bit. <laughs> Praise it alone. So I now learn to control myself. Because we always have argument, we always fight on the road. So I know what the, what is way out. Okay. Let us stay one step front. So when she stays one step front, so what we're talking will be walking. So when I see that my step is a little bit faster than our own, I control myself again. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I'm born inside, I'm born to a family that everything you just have to, when you are eating cell, you rush. You rush, everything rush, 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 rush. As if you are going to Russia. As I said, my wife, eh? She, ah, uh Then -uh. <laughs> you must say, ah, uh -uh. no, 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 no. <laughs> Lagos girl, Lagos babe. Uh, but me, I'm not Lagos babe. <laughs> Praise the Lord. What is the way out? I need to give room for her and she to also have to if not it will not work out so please sir please man let's learn to tolerate ourselves and let's learn to give room let's learn to give room see yourself that you are not perfect and see the other party too that if the two of you see yourself that you are not perfect it will it will go a long way to manage ourselves then the next one she mentioned communication. Let's talk, you. Let's talk. Men, let us talk. We don't talk. Yes, I know. Because when we're angry, we don't want to fight. So we will try to withdraw. But when we draw, you don't talk. It's, 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 tomorrow is going to be a problem. Also, some wife, they bottle it up. No, it's not good. Let's talk. My father died 11 years ago at the age of 109 or 108. 109. At the age of 109, I'm the last born of my mother. And at that time, I think we have we already have our second. Yes, we already you are pregnant of the third. When my father died, me as the last born of my mom, my wife was pregnant of the third child at that time. So you can imagine. We have we have some of the grandchildren that are older than me grandchildren older than me so where i'm going is this when my father died before she died for almost about 10 years or so she he was left the two of them were together me in a far in a far place the two of them in a far place if they don't talk why do i see young when they grow up the space the gap will be there i'm talking to men if you don't talk and befriend your wife now, when you grow old, your wife will abandon you and tell you that I want to go and take care of the grandchildren. They call it Omugo in a, a yes, my wife, uh, my, my daughter, my son put to bed, my daughter in law put to bed. I want to, to go and take care. If, if you have five children, 
this this three months, the why your wife trying to go and take care of this one. The next uh, three months, the next three months, the next three months. Ah, you will suffer. You will suffer. But if you learn to manage yourself and blend now, now, at your old age, I'm talking to men. At your old age, your wife will be there. When we have our second child, our second child, my mother was sick. So my elder sister, Mrs. Ajayi, brought her to Lagos to take care of her. So the second, less than uh, two weeks, the, the second week, less than, is not up to uh, eight days. My mother was, uh, she was giving them trouble that I'm going back home. And they say, the, you see, have an appointment with your doctor. The doctor gave you like uh, seven days. Uh, go through this. The test that we run, they gave us like one week. We, one of the tests, we have not received the result. The, my mother said, no, I'm going back. My sister said for me, I went to the house. And my sister said, so she called my brother in, uh, in London. So they put it on speaker and they said, my brother said, call Lore, let Lore go and talk to <laughs> talk to his mother. And I said, is it now your own mother? He said, Oga, go and talk to her. Because they believe that that woman will listen to me. I entered the room, the woman, my mother was there. I entered the room and said, ah, you are here, yes. So we begin to talk, she begin, we begin to talk. And she received a call. The moment she received a call, hello, she said hello, hello, because the phone was on speaker. She said hello, hello. And the moment she had the voice, it was the voice of my father. My father was still alive then. My father said, ah, hello, I can't hear you. Me, that I'm not holding for the phone that I'm sitting beside, I can hear clearly. And my mother looked at me, and my mother never looked at the phone. Hello, I can't hear you. Well done. Hello, I'm coming. Hello, can you hear me? She used style, 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 enter into the toilet. <laughs> Somebody is laughing. My mother. And that I already have uh, two children. Your last born already have two children. And you are receiving call from your husband. And you are doing hello, hello, you enter to the toilet so that I will not hear. <laughs> Amen. I just laugh. I pretend as if I did not know anything. My mother entered to the toilet. And she was making the call there. Uh, hello, how are you? Have you eaten? That one I said, yes, I have eaten. <laughs> I'll never forget. Are you eating? Yes. And that, that one not answer. I said, even the food, my father answered that, the, yes, he have eaten, but the food is not going. That means the food is not digesting. My mother now also said, yes, she is eating us also, the food is not digesting. My, my, my father now said, even I slept, but I did not even, the sleep is not coming very well. And the one here said, ah, ah, it's the same thing, you know, the generator said, it's disturbing me. The AC in the room, they put me, I don't like it. Uh, she doesn't like the AC. She doesn't like the fan. And she said the, the room is hot. This there is fine, there is AC. You said you should not put anything on, but you are feeling uh, uncomfortable. I understand immediately. <laughs> and she now said, Don't worry. Don't worry. Tomorrow I'm coming. And my father now said, I learned that uh, they said you should wait till next week. That you say my mother said, No, don't worry, I'm coming tomorrow. These are old men and women. They don't live in the same room. But the only thing they do is this. In the evening, you see them, they sit together and they will be talking. Bele, how are you? <laughs> you see? They will be talking and talking and talk. They will talk and talk. From there, the old man will go to his own apartment. When she come out, I look at her. She look at me. I look at her. She look at me. And she doesn't say, eh -huh. I said, nothing. I said, eh, my sister said, you want to be going home? She said, yes. I said, no problem. Tomorrow, I will make arrangement. You will go. Hey, hey. She said, hey, I know that you will understand me. <laughs> I know you understand me. I understood. Because I can hear your conversation. I did not tell her that one. But me, I can hear your, your conversation with your lover boy. I saw that. <laughs> I just come out of the room. I said, hello. This woman, tomorrow she's going back home. He said, is that what you said? But I said, uh, you should be able to confess. I said, no. I don't agree that she should stay one night. Let her go home. It was after she left. One day, me and my sister was talking. I now told her what happened. He said, ah, hold the old people. He said, but they don't stay together. It's not about sex. It's not about anything. I said, leave them home. They are two lover bed. Everybody know. So nobody can separate two lover bed. Leave them. Let her go. The old woman is still alive now. Men, if you don't manage and befriend your wife now, when you say have the strength, 
if you think that you have money that you used to take care of yourself when you are old, money will not go to the market for you. Money will not know when you are strong. Money will not sleep on bed with you. Many money will not know when you are having fever. Men, money will not speak that silent language for you. It is your wife. So it's better you communicate and befriend yourself now. Mommy, have I talked for you? My wife. The Lord bless us in the name of Jesus. Amen. And last but not the least. Yes, I've talked about this one. You will live the rest of your life together. So whatever you plant now, determine. Whatever you plant now, especially men, women, they don't have problem. They will run and go and meet their one son or one daughter. They will not leave us to one housemaid. Ha. Ah. Please, sir, please, man. Let's try how to manage crisis. I only reported my wife to somebody once. And what I was expecting, she did not give us. <laughs> we still have uh, only my daughter there, only our first child. And there was issue, we just married not quite long. And I reported my wife to my wife's sister, the same father, the same mother. But what I was expecting, I did not receive it. So that day, I proposed my heart. If I can tell my, not that they, they supported her, they did not support her and they did not support me. But it did not come out of it. And when we came back to the house in that night, we sat down. The differences, we ironed it out and we settled it. And I look at myself. So this is what we're supposed to have done instead of, and I propose, whatever, we iron it out. When the children have gone to bed, we, iron, we shout on ourselves and we iron it out. Praise the Lord. The Lord bless us in the name of Jesus. Again, please, uh, please, man, let's learn to manage ourselves. Forget about those uh, false teaching, false, those false uh, marriage counseling on the Facebook or the internet. Internet have both positive and negative. You don't know what they are passing through. They will come online. If your husband say yes, tell him, tell him no. Ha! Those, those, let's manage you. Hmm. The Lord bless us in the name of Jesus. Amen. Or again, to all the women, please, women, hear these three things. Learn to fight for your home and your marriage. Learn to fight for your home and your marriage. Number two, learn to fight for your husband. Learn. You, you must learn about it. It's not something that you just take over one day. You learn. It's a spiritual thing. Learn to fight for your husband. And number three, learn to fight for your children. If you don't learn how to fight, make a good warfare for your home, your marriage, another person will take it from you. Number two, if you don't learn how to fight for your husband, another person will take it from you. And if you don't learn how to fight for your children, another person will take, will take the children from you. Somebody saying, uh, uh, today, uh, these days, when, when, when I see people, sometimes I just laugh. I've seen a pastor say, All right, my wife has started at least some things to and I was happy. Why? Because I saw that your wife now come online to minister. So we, we have church. So my wife too has started. It's an encouragement. But hear me, sir. Hear me. My precisely almost about seven. How old is uh, Kule now? Eight. Nine. Ten. 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 Almost ten years ago, my wife would have lost me. My wife was pregnant of uh, my son at that time. And they laid a, a serious allegation against me. And my wife just stood her ground. It's my husband. It's my husband. Crucify her. We will give you money. Crucify her. We will crucify her. I said, this one already is my husband. Is this the father of my children. Ten years ago. Last month, somebody sent an... Uh, is it last month or two months ago? Somebody sent an, a, an offering. I said, for mama, for your wife. I feel like crying when I receive that. It's not the amount... But it's the pride that come out of it that you're able to stand and you minister to people and somebody from outside the nation now remember and reward you. My wife will have lost that. Another person will be the one that is standing today. The ministry will go on. But another person will be standing now. But she said no. Physically, she fight for it. Spiritually, on her knees, she, she fought for it. The marriage and uh, the husband and your children learn to fight also fight for your children too in the place of prayer don't leave them if you don't fight for them in the place of prayer, in the place of prayer another person they will become another people's children they will become father born you will not be able to, to control them again tomorrow and tomorrow when they are supposed to give you peace it will be pieces so please women mothers 
Today is Mother's Day. Please learn three things. Learn how to do it. How to fight for your home and your marriage. If they say crucify your husband, learn how not to crucify him. Even if the man have done something wrong. Go inside the house. Settle it on your knee. Daddy, they said this. Even if the husband lied to you, don't worry. Set, report him to God. Settle him. And your home, defend your home. Fight for your home and your children. Amen. Fight for your children. I have some teaching online how to defend you, how to defend your house, how to defend your husband, and how to defend your children. How do you defend how to fight for your children? Almost about 30 ways for you to pray for your children. Some of them, my wife taught me. I have almost about 20 uh, uh, ways that how to pray for your children. Amen. You pray, you lay hand on them on the morning, in the night, on their birthday, on special occasion. Amen. In their room. Amen. I know that you can lie down on their bed. When you lie down on bed, you don't you begin to pray. And if it's a small bed and you are, don't lie on that bed and break their bed, kneel down before it when they have gone to school. Lay hand on it. Take their clothes, smell it. It's in the Bible. Jacob said, mm, the perfume, the odor of the garment of my son. Take their garment, speak to it. My wife does something say, uh, uh, last month. I will report you to do what. She think that she was smart. I mean that <laughs> it's my area. I just laugh. <laughs> I just laugh. <laughs> my slippers. I put my slippers down. And by the time I come back, there was water on it. I said, my wife, how come there's water on me? She said, I help you to wash it. I, I, I look at the old the slippers. It's not everything. It's where I put leg. That you have small water. Uh, uh, I say, uh, my wife, my wife. <laughs> you sprinkle water on me. <laughs> he said, no. I said, uh, my wife. He said, eh? Uh -huh. uh -huh. If I don't anoint your, your, your shoe, your slipper, who will anoint it? Ah, I said, wait, no. <laughs> Praise it, that Lord. So my wife also taught me that to pray for your children, uh, nothing more that when you are breastfeeding your child, don't just put the child there, be sucking, and don't waste my time. Eh, eh. As that child is sucking, begin to prophesy, begin to decree and declare. When you are bathing for that child, begin to decree. As you are bathing that child, I declare, I declare. Everything that is wrong, every unwanted thing, uh, as I wash you this off, I wash corruption, I wash pollution, I wash contamination. As you are dressing that child, begin to, to declare, declare, the Lord dress you with honor, the Lord, the Lord dress your glory, the Lord. What about the husband? I just mentioned one now. My wife spoke water, <laughs> anoint my shoe, and I caught her that day. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. That is clothes. You are, you are folding it. Don't just fold. As you are folding it, decree and declare. Every food that you serve your husband, don't just serve food anyhow. Serve it with what? With proclamation as you are preparing it. This is the, the food of honor. This is the food for honor, honorable. This is the food for king, for prince. And whatever, as you eating it, this is the blood of Jesus. This is the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. As my husband eat this food, every pollution, every contamination, every manipulation, ha, fight you. Fight. You know why you need to fight? Please, quote unquote, fight in the place of prayer. No physical fight. When you fight in the place of prayer, the Lord go ahead and settle it for you. Battle that will come next year, that will come two years, the Lord will go ahead and settle it. Oh, the Lord bless us in the name of Jesus. So, to all the mothers, happy Mother's Day. I celebrate every one of you in the name of Jesus. Please, let's not forget again, next week, Saturday, when we are coming, please come with wine. You and your husband, come with wine. We take communal wine of joy, new wine in your home, new wine in your marriage, new wine in your business, new wine. Yes, in that home, I declare, I declare, as we come here yeah, mr Hammer, you will begin to see that from that next week there shall be joy there shall be renewal of joy renewal of love in the name of jesus praise ye the lord praise the living jesus once again i welcome us to day 18 am i right day 19 amen as i said the lord just said gave me message and said i should deliver it number one leviticus 14 40 leviticus 1440. Uh, Sister Sarah over deliver message, a good message this morning. Have I spoken for women? Amen. Praise ye the Lord. Leviticus 1440, verse 40. Then the priest shall command 
that they take away the stones in which the plague is, and they shall cast them into an unclean place without the city, within, without. That means outside the city, outside the city, outside the city. He's talking about house that has been polluted, a house that they, they detect something evil, that there was an evil in that place. And the Bible said that thing that is of evil, the stone, they should take it and take it out of the home. And uh, when God, God said that, I said, what is, what is it? And the Spirit of the Lord said, every strange stone, that means sickness, your body is that house, any strange stone, any strange object, according to Job, the book of Job, any stone of darkness in your life, in your home, in your marriage, in your business, in your career, any strange stone in that home, any strange stone in that your business, any strange stone in that factory, any strange stone in that your business premises, in your environment, that is bringing or attracting evil into your life, the Lord is saying tonight, that today, that He cast it out in the name of Jesus. So I decree, I declare upon you, unto your body, unto your home, to your marriage, to that business premises, to that factory, where the stone of darkness, the stone of emptiness, are be thrown. That strange stone, that strange object, that occultic object in your house, in your body a sickness, in your factory that is bringing evil, that is attracting evil by the Spirit of the Lord. We cast it out in the name of Jesus. We cast it out in the name of Jesus. We cast it out in the name of Jesus. We cast it out in the name of Jesus. Read to this states down. Every strange stone, every strange object in your life, no or no, that is attracting evil to your life. Heaven expire them in the name of Jesus. Heaven reject them in the name of Jesus. Heaven expire them in the name of Jesus. Number two, Revelation 4, verse 1. Second message. Revelation chapter 4, verse 1. Revelation chapter 4, verse 1. Revelation chapter 4, verse 1. And this I look, and behold, a door was opened in heaven. And this I look, and behold, a door was opened in heaven and uh, was the voice, the first voice which I heard was as it were of a trumpet. The first voice, which means it's not only one voice. The first voice that I heard was as it were of trumpet talking with me. We said, Come up either. I will show you the thing which must be hereafter. That means things that will come after. What will happen tomorrow? What will happen next year? I will show you. Praise the Lord. And uh, the Lord is saying, This is the season of elevation. And if he said, Come up either. Come up either. Come up either. God is saying that he tells somebody that according to Revelation verse 4, these are the things that will happen. In a quick succession in your life, in a quick succession in your marriage. Number one, doors will open. Doors, not just one door, doors will open. And that will lead to you making decision on which one should you take because you need to take just one option. Out of all the options that will be on ground, there's going to be doors that is going to open, but you need option that will be option, you need to take one. So that you don't take the wrong counsel, so that you don't take the wrong decision, so that you don't take the wrong step. Hear me, the first of the Lord, you that person. The Lord said, I should tell you. After the multitude of the counsel, the very first one, the very first one, that one will not look real. That one will not look good. That one will not look palatable. That one will not be clear. That one will not look sweet. Every other people will reject that one, but that, it, and that one is the very first option. It's the very first alternative that you have. Is after that one, there are many other alternatives, there are many other options. But the very first option, the very first option, I repeat again, so that you don't take a wrong step. The very first option, maybe your own is a, a job, maybe it's a living, I don't know. But what the Lord told me is that as the season of elevation, doors will open, but they are going to be, you need to take option because there are many on ground. But the very first one, maybe you are already in that position. You don't know what step to take. Should I take this? Should I take this? Should I take this? There are options on ground. But the Spirit of the Lord says, I should tell you, the very first, that very first option before other alternative, which was not good, 
which did not look good, which was not on uh, palatable, God said you should go for that one. And uh, from that one, the Lord said, I will tell you that promotion will come out of that one and it will lead to generational blessing. You that person, I declare, I declare grace to hear, grace to abide, grace not to miss it. Let it rest upon you in the name of Jesus. Number three message Joshua 13, verse 1. Joshua 13, verse 1. Joshua chapter 13, verse 1. Joshua chapter 13, verse 1. The first one, Leviticus 14, 14. Strange stone that lead to problem. God is removing it. Number two, Revelation 4, verse 1. It's a season of elevation, and God has given you the step. Amen. The advice what you should do and what you should not do. Then number three, Joshua 13, verse 1. Now Joshua was old and speaking in years, old and speaking in years, and the Lord said unto him, Thou art old and speaking in years, and there remaineth yet very much land to possess. And the Lord said, as you tell this person, that you are old. Physically by age, you are old. But God is says, I tell you, not yet over for you. It is not yet over for you. Because you keep looking at yourself, with my age, you know, can I get it? With my age, you know, is it possible? God is saying, it's not yet over for you. It is not yet over because I, the Lord God, am not yet over with. I'm not, it's not, I'm not yet over or true with you. The God is saying, more ground to cover. More ground to cover. If you are that person, you are looking at yourself that you are old. You are looking look at yourself that the edge is not on your side. But God is saying it is not yet over for you because it is he has not he is not yet done with you. I decree, I declare. It's not more ground to cover. I decree, I declare. The grace, the courage, the boldness, the strength that you need, receive it in the name of Jesus. 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 You that person, the grace, the courage, the boldness, the strength for your body that you need. For you to be able to go and cover more ground and win more soul and invest more and gain more ground in the name of Jesus. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Receive it. 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 Receive that strength. Receive that grace. Receive that strength. Receive that grace. In the name of Jesus. Number four, Joshua 14. Joshua 14, 6 to 15. Joshua 14. Verses to 15. Joshua 14, verses to 15. Then the children of Judah came unto Joshua in Giga, and Caleb the son of Jephunneh, the Canaanite, said unto him, That now is the thing that the Lord said unto Moses, the man of God, concerning me and thee, a Kadesh Banya. Forty years old I was when Moses, the servant of the Lord, sent me from Kadesh Banya to spy out the land. And I brought him word again as it was in my heart. Nevertheless, my brethren that went on with me made out of the people met, but I wholly follow the Lord my God. Hear me, sir, hear me, man. For those of you who are holding on to God's prophecy and revelation for your life, and people are giving you alternative, your husband is giving you alternative, your wife is giving you alternative, your family are giving you alternative. I want you to listen to this one very well. Where are we? Verse, verse 8. I, but only I follow the Lord my God. Verse 9. And Moses swear on that day, saying, Surely the land whereon thy feet are trodden shall be thy inheritance, and the chi and thy children forever, because thou art holy, follow the Lord my God. Verse 10. Everybody. Now, somebody say, Now, behold, the Lord has kept me alive, as he said, these forty and five years. 40 years was when he was now 40 and 5. That means 45 years ago, the same strength, 45 years ago, 45 years ago, between when God promised him and now that he was claiming it, was 45. So which means he was 85 at this point. He said 40 and 5 years. He who sees the Lord spread the word unto mercy. Why the children of Israel wander in the wilderness? And now, lo, I am this day, first call, and five years 85 as yet as i am strong this day as i was in the day moses sent me as my strength was then even so is my son now for war born to go out and to come in 
verse 12. Everybody, let's read it read together. Now, therefore, give me this mountain. Wherefore the Lord spake in that day, give me this mountain today, this very day. Which God has promised me 45 years ago. 45 years ago. Verse 13. And Joshua blessed him and gave unto Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, he brought for an inheritance. He brought there what became the inheritance of Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, the Kenesite, unto this day, because that he wholly followed the Lord God of Israel. I don't know how many years you have been carrying that prophecy, that revelation, but you hold on to it. God is saying, I should tell you, that it is your season for you to possess your possession, for you to enter into your inheritance, for you to begin to manifest that long time dream and vision it is your time if you are in that category for 20 years for 30 years for 40 years or like joe like uh, caleb for 45 years or more you are becoming that prophecy on your head you are becoming that prediction on your head you are becoming that revelation on your head and you hold on to god you do not miss it you do not forsake god you do not look for another god you are saying god will do it and if God do not do it, I will not forsake him. God is saying, I should tell you, I should decree his word. This season that you are in, in the name of Jesus, that possession, that mountain, that, that revelation, that dream, in the name of Jesus, begin to possess it in the name of Jesus. Begin to possess it. Begin to possess it. Begin to possess it. Begin to possess it. That your inheritance, the manifestation of that dream and vision, in the name of Jesus, enter into it in the name of Jesus. Enter into it. 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 In the name of Jesus. If you are that person, lay hand on your chest. Say age is no barrier. Say age is no barrier. Say age is the thing of the mind. Say every long time policy. Every long time pro revelation. Say this season. I enter to the manifestation. I enter to the manifestation. As I decree, I declare in the name of Jesus. Enter into it in the name of Jesus. The next one. Psalm 25, verse 14. Psalm 25, verse 14. Psalm 25, verse 14. The secret of the Lord is with them that fear him, and he will show them his covenant. The secret of the Lord. The secret of the Lord is with them that fear him. What is the secret of the Lord? Job 29, verse 4. Job 29, verse 4. Job 29, verse 4. The secret of the Lord is with them that fear him. Job 29, verse 4. As I was in the days of my youth, when the secret of the Lord was upon my tabernacle, the secret of the Lord was upon my tabernacle. So Job here is to still talking about it, which means the secret of the Lord is real. The secret of the Lord can be revealed to human being. Human being can have access to the secret of the Lord. What is the secret of the Lord? Daniel 5, 11 to 15. Daniel chapter 5, verse 11 to 15. There you see the secret of the Lord. There is a man in thy kingdom in whom is the spirit of the holy gods. In whom is the spirit of the holy God, in whom is the secret of the holy God. The Bible says, in whom is the spirit. The spirit they are talking about, the secret of the holy God. In and in the days of thy father, light and understanding and wisdom, like the wisdom of the gods, were found in him, in whom the king of the Nebuchadnezzar, thy father, the king, I said, thy father, made master of the magicians, the astrologers, the Shadians and the soothsayers. Those who are knowledgeable, those who have the, the, the knowledge, those who have those who have the power, those who have the authority, they made this man an egg over them. They make him to be their leader. Why? Because the spirit of the Holy Ghost, because the secret of the Holy God was in him. And what is the secret? Light, understanding, wisdom. Of the gods, first 12. For as much as excellent spirit, somebody says excellent spirit, and knowledge, and understanding, and interpreting of dreams, and showing of our sentences, and the serving doubt were found in the same channel in whom the king named Bethsaida, 
Now let Daniel be called and he will show the uh, interpretation. Verse 13. Then was Daniel brought before the king, and the king spake unto Daniel, say, And thou Daniel, which art of that's close. Where are we? Sorry, my hand press it. Daniel. Daniel what? Daniel 5. Verse 13. Then Daniel was brought in before the king, and the king spake and said unto Daniel, I doubt that Daniel, which are of the children of captivity of Judah, in whom the king my father brought out of the jewelry. And they brought him before the king. Instead of the king to listen to him, the king first of all rubbish him. Are you Daniel? Ordinary slave that my father brought, capture you and your entire family. Are you one of those useless slaves? Instead of him to listen, instead of him to be humble, are you one of them? Verse 14. I have even heard of thee that the Spirit of God is in thee, that light and understanding and excellent wisdom is found in you. Now the wise men, the astrologers, have been brought in before me, and they should read this writing, and may know unto me the interpretation of but, but, but they could not. They are brought good people, they are brought the legend people, they are brought men of understanding, they are brought people that are, that, that are sponsored, they are brought prophets before me, but they could not solve it. But you ordinary slave, that they say you have the secret of the Lord, can you do it? I've heard about you. Verse 17, Daniel laughed. Then Daniel answered and said before the king, Let your gift, whatever you will give me as a result of this, let it be with you. But I will make known to you the secret of the Lord, what the Lord God has meant. The secret of the Lord. The secret of the Lord. He talked about lies. When there are darkness, the secret of the law, he talk about wisdom, he talk about understanding, he talk about the spirit, the excellent spirit, he talk about knowledge, he talk about understanding, interpreting of dreams, art centers, artists, they will just call you to come and solve it, and you enter there, you just solve it for them. You solve it as if you are playing. Problem that people are not able to solve in your family. You just appear and you just saw them as if I see you are playing. It's not costing you anything. What is the meaning? When you have the secret of the Lord in you, the Lord makes you a solution provider to your generation. Because you have the wisdom, you have the knowledge, you have the interpretation, the light of God will be in you. When you appear in a place, darkness will visit you away. When there is darkness in marriage, when you appear there, you are because you are the light, you tell them what to do, and the light of God through you will radiate there. That is the secret of the Lord. The Lord is saying, I should tell you that today I should decree upon you the secret of the Lord. Let it be revealed for those of you who need, who are crying, that your desire is for you to have that secret of the Lord. To have the knowledge of the Lord. To have the light of God. Because you want God to make you a solution provider to your generation, to your family, to your environment. You want to have the spirit of wisdom so that when problems arose, you'll be able to solve them without sweat and struggle. If you are in that category, lift up your hand. I declare, I declare upon you that in the name of Jesus, the secret of the Lord, let it be revealed unto you in the name of Jesus. Let it be revealed unto you. Let it be revealed unto you. Deuteronomy 29, 29. The secret of the, the secret is belong to God. But those that be, those that belong to men, he show you unto them. The secret is belong to, to God. But those that he show unto men, it belong to men. You that person, that that is your desire. You want to be known things. You want to have a spiritual input, spiritual, your spiritual muscle, you want God to increase it so that you'll be able to see into the spirit, realm. you'll be able to hear God concerning your life, concerning your marriage, concerning your business, concerning your career. If you are that person, I decree, I declare the spirit of the Almighty God, the wisdom of the Almighty God, the secret of the Almighty God, the essence spirit of God, let it rest upon you in the name of Jesus. Let it rest upon you. 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 
from today, the spirit of the Almighty God, let it begin to guide you in the name of Jesus. Let it begin to guide you. 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 In the name of Jesus. The next one. Ecclesiastes 10, 5 to 7. Ecclesiastes 10, 5 to 7. If you have made a mistake in the life and it has caused trouble to your life and you are inside that trouble, please come near. Come near me now. If you are entered into error, you have committed an error and you are into the problem or manipulation of setting as a result of one mistake or the other, one mistake or error that you committed some years ago, please increase the volume. Increase the volume of your phone now. Ecclesiastes chapter 5. Ecclesiastes chapter 10. Chapter 10, please. 5 to 7. You are into a problem. There are crises in your home. There are crises in your marriage. There are crises concerning the work of your hand. And you know very well it's as a result of that blunder some years ago. Have you increased the volume? Have you increased the volume? Can we read it? Ecclesiastes 10, 5 to 7. There is an evil which I have seen under the sun as an error which proceeded from the ruler. Folly is set in great dignity. And the rich sit in low places. Fully, a foolish person, a non entity, somebody who, don't, who cannot imagine by himself, somebody who cannot think by himself, somebody who always, who always commit blunder. He sitting where? He sitting in the place of dignity. And those who are rich, those who are honored people, the Bible says they are sitting on the, in the low place. For seven, I have seen servants upon horses. And I have seen priests working as servants on the earth. Is that not an error? A servant is riding on us. And a priest, somebody that's supposed to be on that house, is not working barefooted. Is that not an error? Tell me, tell me, tell me, tell me, fast five. Is that not an error? He said, I have seen error which proceeded from the ruler. I have seen a great evil under the sun. Is it not evil? God has created you to be priest, to be noble, to be alive. But your life is walking barefooted. You are walking where those who are to be your servants, they are riding on horses. I believe you understand this. I believe you understand this. We simply mean, you look at people who don't have up to 1% of what you have. You look at people who don't have 1% of your certificate. You look at people who don't have 1% of your qualification. You see them up there. And you that you are supposed to be up there, you are grand. You are grand. That is an error. That is a mistake. I don't know what to know what caused it. Maybe you caused it yourself out of disobedience, out of taking a wrong decision, or somebody, your husband, your wife took a wrong decision, and as a result of that, that problem, that crisis is in your life. But hear me, sir. Hear me, man. Hear me, sir. Hear me, man. The Lord is saying, I should tell you today, that error, that mistake, that Lord, bring correction in the name of Jesus. That error, that mistake, that has granted you, that has set, that has put barrier upon you, that error, that mistake, that has, that has carried you today. A correction, divine correction is coming in the name of Jesus. If it's your marriage, receive correction. If it's your business, receive correction. Here, Mr. Here, there are some mistakes and error that we committed. And what cannot live with them? And what cannot go out with them? So one life is just a life full of pain. Somebody that married is our enemy. You want to come out of the marriage? Or you want to stay inside that marriage? Praise the Lord. You embark on a journey. You get you, they employ you in a job, and that job, yes, you are getting money, something to feed yourself, but it's not giving you comfort. If you go, if you leave the job, there won't be food for you and your family. And if you stay there, there are pains. You leave, you leave that job, there's no food for you. You stay there, you are staying inside pain. Is it not an here, Mr. Hammer? Every hero, every mistake. In your life, in the name of Jesus, heaven correct it. In the name of Jesus, heaven correct it. Heaven correct it. Heaven correct it. Acts chapter nine in the book of Acts, Acts chapter nine. Saul was going to Damascus 
with a bad vision, with a letter of error. But what happened to him? God met him on his way. He got to Damascus with another vision. The vision was corrected. As many of you have embarked on a journey, but that journey is causing you pain and affliction. You know that you cannot step down, you cannot go back, you cannot, there's nothing you can do. It's just for you to continue with that pain. Hear me, sir, hear me, man. Saul continued the journey. Saul got to Damascus, but with a new vision. The letter was corrected. The vision was corrected. He was going there before with the vision to go and kill. But God changed it on getting there. Instead of killing people, he now became an apostle. One that gathered. One that brought people unto Christ. Hear me, sir, hear me, man. Every vision that you are carrying that are hero and is bringing problem into your life. Today, I decree, I declare, let there be correction in the name of Jesus. Let there be correction. Let there be correction. Let there be correction in the name of Jesus. Everybody lift up your hand as we know. Every error in your life, every mistake in your life that has turned your prince to a servant, that make your king to not be a, a servant. Today, heaven correct it in the name of Jesus. Every error in your life that has turned you to a beggarly element. You do, if you don't beg, you cannot live. You beg to live. You beg to survive. Hear me and hear me very well. In the name of Jesus, by the right hand of God, heaven correct it in the name of Jesus. Every error in your life that has turned your priesthood has turned into servitude, that has turned into serv to slave to, to, to slavehood. I declare, I declare, in that slavery, let the Lord turn it around for good in the name of Jesus. Joseph was sentenced to prison, but in that prison, the Lord turned it around and he became a noble, he became an ally, he became the second one in position in the old world at that time. I decree, I declare, whatever error that has entered into your life, entered into your home, entered into your marriage, and has turned your life around to slavery today, let the Lord God reverse it in the name of Jesus. Every error that is making you to live the opposite of who you are. Every mistake that entered into your life, either through your parents, when you are still small, whatever hero that entered into your life, and today you are living the opposite of the creation, the real thing that God created. Today, I declare, I declare, let there be correction in the name of Jesus. You, that person, hear this and say, You are mothers of nation, but you are living a barren life. You are mother of nation. That means you are by no supposed to have given back to children. But your life is, you are living a barren life. Hear me, sir, hear me. I decree, I declare, defy correction in the name of Jesus. Defy correction, 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 defy correction. In the name of Jesus, every wrong step, every wrong vision, every wrong journey, let there be defy correction in the name of Jesus. Let there be defy correction in the name of Jesus. Let there be defy correction in the name of Jesus. And last but not the least, I decree, I declare, every rainy storm, the last one, every rainy storm in your home, right now, right now, right now, right now, that affliction in your home, today I declare, I declare, peace be still in the name of Jesus, peace be still in the name of Jesus, peace be still in the name of Jesus, peace be still in the name of Jesus. 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 Thank you, mighty Father. Blessed be your name. We give you praise. We give you honor. In Jesus' name, we are praying. If you know you have been blessed today, you know God has spoken to you. You know you have received confirmation of your own word. Why not just lift up your hand, celebrate God, give God thanks, give God praise. Let's worship Him. Let's adore Him. Whatever is your own there, begin to claim it. If you are the one that God is putting an end to that storm in your home, why not lift up your hand and celebrate God? If you are the one that that mistake and error that is causing you, causing your life, if you know that God is correcting it, lift up your hand and give Him time. If you know you are the one that the secret of the Lord shall be revealed, shall be placed upon you, shall be revealed unto you, why not just lift up your hand and appreciate God? If you are that person, you are hold, but God is saying, it's not yet over for you. They have just begun a new season, a new life in your life. Why not just lift up your hand 
and appreciate God. If you are that person that you have been carrying prophecy and revelation for ages, and you know that this is it, you are entering into the manifestation of that vision, why not just lift up hand and appreciate God? You are that person, you are entering into a season of elevation, your season of promotion, why not just lift God up on your hand and say, thank you, Jesus. You are that person. There are strange objects in your life, strange objects in your body, strange objects in your home, strange objects in your marriage, strange objects where you walk, and you know that strange object is the one causing affliction. And today you know that God is exposing and is removing it. Sickness shall be far away from you. Crisis shall be far away from your home. Crisis and affliction shall be far away from your business. Why not just lift up your hand and say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you for today. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Lift up your prayer request. Your prayer request and your mantle, lift it up. I speak to you into that prayer request in your hand. In the name of Jesus. Peace of God upon it in the name of Jesus. The breath of God for testimony. The breath of God for life. The breath of God for testimony. The breath of God for life. Let it come upon it in the name of Jesus. That mantle in your hand become the mantle of fire. 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 That mantle in your hand. In the name of Jesus. Let it become the mantle of fire in the name of Jesus. The Lord breathe upon it. As you put it on your body, those of you who are sick, healing shall be transferred, healing grace shall be transferred to your body in the name of Jesus. That house where you enter with that mantle, in the name of Jesus, darkness shall be far away from it in the name of Jesus. That business, as you enter into that business, in the name of Jesus, every storm, every boastful thing in that hole, in the name of Jesus, that man, the Lord settle it, the Lord silent it in the name of Jesus. Thank you, mighty Father. Blessed be your name. In Jesus' name, we are praying. For those of you partner with your, with your seed, with your tithe, with your offering, I decree, I declare, peace of the Almighty God upon you in the name of Jesus. The testimony of the Almighty God, let it begin to speak in the name of Jesus. Is there anyone among you that you have lost something? You have lost glory. The glory of your business has been lost. The honor of your marriage has been lost. The joy of your marriage has been lost. The joy of that business has been lost. Among those of you who send in your seed, your tithe, your offering to this ministry, the prophet said, where did you lose it? And he went there and he put his, his, his rod there. And what happened? The iron head swim up. Iron will never float on the water, but will go down. But by the prophetic mantle, what he lost must be recovered. And it was recovered. Every one of you, I decree, I declare, whatever good things of life that you're supposed to be enjoying that you have lost, that the enemy has taken, that the enemy has diverted, I decree, I declare, from that place that you lost them, recover them back in the name of Jesus. Recover them, 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 recover them in the name of Jesus. So shall it be. In Jesus' name, we are praying. I say, in Jesus' name, we are praying. Praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. Once again, happy mothers to every mothers and mothers to be in the house. May the Lord God bless and reward your labor in the name of Jesus. Till we meet again tomorrow. Tomorrow is Monday, day 20 of this program. Amen. And don't forget, every Monday, 5 a.m., we come online to decree into the week. As you join me tomorrow morning, 5 a.m., as you come to decree into the day, into the day, into the week, or during the prayer of our lunch, 12 o'clock tomorrow, go forth from this time henceforth. And begin to enjoy the fulfillment, the manifestation of God's promise for your life. Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus.